Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Tammy Ernest and I am a long arm quilter. And here on my channel, I like to share customer finishes as well as my own personal projects. So I welcome you in and we're gonna talk all about pantographs and quilts again today. So if you've been following me for very long, you know I have been working on this antique quilt top. Well, it's antique. I would say it's antique textiles. So they were pillowcases and um, other cloth items that had some embroidery or cross stitch done to them. And I had a friend ask if I could put them into a quilt so that they could be seen and out where uh, everyone in the family could enjoy them and not just tucked away on a shelf. And so I've been working on this for a while and it is finally finished, ready to go back uh, to its owner. So I have been using this Carolyn Forrester pattern. This was given to me by another client. Um, she had made the same quilt, and when I expressed interest in the pattern, she just gave me the, um, the magazine um, papers <laughs> that she had pulled it out of. So uh, there is a way to get a hold of this pattern. I have linked it down below, but um, this one, basically, you're using vintage cloth, whatever um, things you have in your cedar chest that have been passed down through your family, and you um, are cutting those apart and creating quilt blocks from them. The whole point of this is not to keep them centered in the blocks. Uh, if you're familiar, especially with pillowcases and things that had... Um, stitching added to them, they're always at the very edge of the quilt or a very edge of the pillowcase. And so to get them into a block, you've either got to use a very skinny block or you've got to have a lot of extra um, space around the edges because you're, you're going right up to the edge of that textile. So this creates a very uh, pleasing pattern by not having everything centered. They're all off just a little bit. Um, but it's so fun to have all of them in one quilt so that they can be enjoyed. So you've seen this many times. I have used this pattern. The um, I used as much, uh, I think, in all of the quilt top on this. There is nothing in the quilt top besides the sashing that is not um, from those pillowcases and tablecloths and things. Even the little uh, blocks you'll see, you know, a rectangle here or a, a square in another area. I used all of the things that I could from the pillowcases. So the white areas in a pillowcase, um, and that's mostly what it was because some of the others are more of a linen type feel and I didn't use those in the quilt top unless they had a, um, a stitching design on those. And you can kind of tell from the pictures, some of the fabrics are a little darker, some are a little lighter. Usually the darker ones are more of a linen type feel to the um, to the textile that I was using. But everything else on the quilt top, all of the white areas were something from those textiles. And then only the sashing is what I added. And this is Grace by Brenda Riddle. And I don't know if this is still available. I used a jelly roll. Actually, I used two jelly rolls. Um, one jelly roll that did not, if it had two pieces of the strip, I was okay. But in the jelly roll, if it only had one, then those that's the reason I had to buy a second jelly roll because some of the pieces I chose didn't have two of the same print in the jelly roll. No worries, I'll be able to use that for something else. Um, it would be really pretty in another quilt as well. So I'll use the extras from that into something else. But I did use two jelly rolls just so that I could um, have enough of the same print to put around each block. You'll have to go back and watch my videos from the last couple times I've shown this because I did not do this as a block as the um, directions say. So you can see each block how it's done like this and these rectangles right here in between. So you have these square blocks and then you have rectangles here, rectangles above it, you have a square here. Those are actually four small squares that all meet together to create the larger white square. Right here, this one and this one are two smaller rectangles that are then joined when these two blocks are joined because I did not want to um, cut apart some of the textiles and, and then put them back together to create this area right here. I just did the math and created a larger rectangle so I didn't have to cut that down. But that did mean that I needed to work in rows rather than blocks. So we go back if you're interested in that and watch um, the other videos where I talk about that. So the backing fabric, I just chose a white on a white, on white 
Um, ordered this from the Fat Quarter Shop. This is a widescreen, 108 inch wide. This is Carolyn Friedlander by for Robert Kaufman. And just a white on white, more of a, um, what do I want to say, a lattice like set on point. So lattice work set on, very, very tiny though. I mean, unless you're up close, you're probably not even gonna see it. I was a little disappointed when I first got the fabric because it felt very almost rubbery type. I mean, because there was the screen print on top of that fabric was was um, pretty thick, I just felt like. The more I've worked with it, it's softened up. I don't feel any of that now, but it just felt at first um, when it was straight off the bolt that it was um, just felt a little, a little stiff, a little, um, not soft to the touch, but now that it's worked, now that I've stitched it, now that I've worked with it, it's been pressed a couple times, um, you know, on the long arm and all, and stitched through, it, it feels fine, and I have no trouble with it now. But don't be surprised if you get it, if it has just that little thicker feel. If you don't like that, that um, feel, then I would go with uh, a different white on white. Um, didn't realize that. I mean, I could see the print when I was looking at it online. I could see that it was a lattice type work, but didn't really, you know, there's no way to feel it. That's why we like to go to quilt stores, right? You just got to feel the fabric and there's something to be said about that. So binding, we did all the binding on this one as well, obviously, because we're giving it back as a finished quilt. So what I did was take leftover jelly roll strips, just joined them. I kept the long ones. I did, you know, the full length of the jelly roll strip joined it with the next one and just did that all the way around. Didn't try to plan it at all. Well, in the fact that I didn't put two ginghams next to each other, I didn't try to put two of the same print in different colorways together. That's the only way that I planned it. I didn't actually plan where it went on the quilt, just did it as a scrappy one, but obviously fairly long because it's doing the full 42 inches or 40 inches by the time you uh, join it with another one the full 40 inches um, for the strip all the way around. Pantograph. So for this one, I, I told you I probably was gonna go with something floral. Once I put it on the long arm, I actually didn't. I went with a Chantilly lace. And the reason is I feel like this has a little bit of a, it, it's a very dainty um, tea type, you know, an English tea type of um, design. A little bit of, you know, it's got swirls, it's got a little bit of the, um, the, what I would call like scroll or ironwork type of look to it. I did make it fairly small. I mean, this is probably only two inches tall, the one motif. And then, so it goes back, it kind of zigzags up and down. And I know it's harder to see white on white because the, the camera picks up those whites a little different. Um, so I'll do the best I can here. So when it stitches out, it does do one of the motifs facing up, and then it comes down and does one of them going down, up and down. So, you know, if you were doing, um, if you were like mapping it out uh, in a straight line, it would be going in a zigzag that direction. So my two inches is, I'd say, my motif that's on the bottom, two inches, my motif that's facing to the top, two inches. The total width of it is probably only... Mm, three inches tall total from the whole pantograph as it's going across um, because you have some, you know, obviously the scroll work is all in the middle. So I hope that makes sense what I'm trying to say there. So fairly small. Um, wanted to create a lot of um, design in those white spaces, kind of add into that. So kind of a frilly, um, feathery type of design that you would see on uh, in quilting of older quilts and things so I just I'm really thrilled with how this turned out so glad it's finally done um, Emily has not seen it yet and so I will be uh, sending her pictures later today and getting with her to get this back to her but I'm super excited that it's all finished so if you have textiles left in a cedar chest, this is a great pattern to work with it or create your own, but just know that they can be done. Actually on these, nothing in this quilt that I add stabilizer to the back. Couple of the linen fabrics, I probably could have because they were a little stretchy in places. The fabrics themselves were in great condition. No holes, nothing being pulled or, um, you know, no wear and tear on them. These really had been maintained very nicely. If you were using older fabrics that had some wear and tear or had some um, some damage to them, I would I would 
probably preserve those in a different way, maybe even just behind glass and in a picture frame or something like that. Um, but if you're using it as a quilt, I really feel like the, the, the fabrics need to be in really nice order, um, in nice condition. You don't want to, um, they're just not gonna hold up if they're not already in a good condition. Now this quilt, I would tell Emily not to wash it. Um, I think the best way, if it does get soiled, I would kind of spot clean it, um, press it if it needs to. I would not really throw it in the dryer. Um, just because you've got a lot of older things, you don't want to take the chance of ruining this at all. And I'm not, I, I'm not, um, uh, I'm not an expert on on antique textiles in any way. I would uh, refer you on to others that study that and know that and and work with that more. I'm just, um, you know, in working with fabrics like this. Um, that's my advice, but uh, I would guide you on to others who have studied it a lot more. And I would also consider myself not, um, I don't refurbish quilts back to their original state. I will take, if I find an antique quilt top in, a, um, in an antique store or something that's passed down, I will finish that. I will, um, you know, put it on the long arm and put a, a nice backing on it if I can and finish it, but I am not repairing quilts. I am pretty much just preserving them as they are. And there are those um, people out there, there are companies out there that will restore your quilts back to its original design if that's what you want. Personally, um, I kind of like the history that goes along with quilts that have been used. You know, I like to think about who touched these and, and who was handling them and who held them and who created this, you know, hole in this part of the quilt, you know? Did it get, you know, stuck on a nail somewhere while they were pulling it up into the wagon? I don't know. I mean, I just, I kind of like to to see things how they are. I'm kind of that way in our old farmhouse as well. I mean, we've got wooden floors around here and I don't really want to, you know, finish them to a nice, pristine finish, you know? It's like, there's history here. There's history there. <laughs> um, and I, I like that. I like to see, I like to think about what happened before with whether it's a quilt or whether it's a furniture piece or whether it's our floors or our walls. Um, we've lived in old houses all our life. This is our second one. We've lived here 24 years now. Prior to this, we lived in an old house in a town not far from here, and I we we did some opening up of walls and closing in of others, and in our old house, when we opened up a wall, we found where it had been signed on the inside of the, of the drywall where they had closed it up at one point, and to me, that's all history. <laughs> you know, I don't need to restore it back to the way it was then. I like to see the way it was maybe, but I don't have to restore it back to that. I just like to see the progression of history as we go through. So that's my take on, on antique quilts, antique textiles. I love this and I can't wait for Emily to uh, get it back. So let's move on to some customer quilts. I'm going to start today with two of Marsha's quilts that have already gone home. And so here are pictures of the first one. All right, so Marsha's first quilt. This is, again, one of the three-yard quilts that comes from Fabric Cafe. This one is called Dreamweaver, and it can be found in the book um, Quick as a Wink. Marsha did use all batiks on this. I don't have specifics about what line, um, but I love the colors in this one. I love how um, it weaves through, the pattern weaves through. It looks like the, um, you know, the green's weaving down as it moves down the quilt, and then the tan colors are weaving in and out, going horizontal. Uh, really pretty. Marcia did choose a minky for the backing, and this is more of a sand color. I absolutely love the texture it shows on the back when you put minky on the back of a quilt. And there is batting in this one as well. This one measured 45 by 61, just a nice size uh, throw quilt. And a lot of those three yard fabric quilts, um, 
that's what you're going to get is about that size. I did show some last week and somebody made the comment, this looks bigger than a three yard quilt. And I'm sure it was. I'm sure that Marcia and those from that I showed last week had extended the pattern, had used some more fabric, but just uh, understand that these, uh, the, the patterns in this book can be expanded to make a larger. Um, this is just gives you a good pattern to work with. So many good designs in these uh, in the Fabric Cafe books. So you'll have to check those out if you have not done one of these yet. So Marsha asked if a Baptist fan would look good on this quilt, and I love Baptist fan. Again, I love the texture that it creates um, on the front of the quilt as well as on the back of the quilt. This one is called the Easy Baptist Fan, put out by Three Sisters Fabric. And um, normally when I bring this one into my Pro Stitcher um, software, the size that it is is a perfect size for um, the quilt. So both of these that I'm gonna show you of Marsha's, she, both, she wanted the Easy Baptist fan on both of them. And when it pulls into the program, that's the exact size that I used for that. I will show you another one later on today in today's video that I actually made quite a bit larger, but it's the same pantograph again. So Baptist fan is just a classic design, um, just a nice pattern, nice, uh, finish to any quilt. It's one of those classics that you could add to just about anything and it's going to look really nice. I did use sort of a, a creamy sand color um, thread on this one. Again, that's the tone of the quilt, both front and back, so it works really nicely on this one. And I just love it. I think this is really, really cute. But you won't want to miss Marsha's second quilt. Here are pictures of that one. Love the beachy vibes of this quilt. Not beachy, maybe more so cabin, lake kind of related. Not so much beachy. Uh, I guess the blue and the whites kind of, but uh, this is just a great quilt. So this one measures 74 by 74, so a nice square, good size quilt. And um, notice this is all flying geese. So Marcia used a tutorial put out by homemade Emily Jane, where she talks about making four flying geese at a time. Have you tried this way? Um, I've done this a couple of different times. I usually revert back to the old traditional way of adding the easy corner triangles on to create a um, flying geese. But you can make four flying geese at a time with no waste, like you have with the traditional where you're adding an easy corner triangle, pressing it back, and you've got those um, backing, two backing pieces that you need to trim away. With the four at a time, you don't get any of that um, extra waste, so you'll need to try it. You'll want to follow uh, Homemade Emily Jane's tutorial, and she gives great instructions there to see, because it's one of those things you're like, this is not working. I do not understand and then it works. So just stay with it, uh, follow the directions, and you too can make four flying geese at a time, and it's really fun. So for this one, Marsha used all blue fabrics on this one, all with a lake theme to them, um, boating, laking, the, the fabrics have a lot of oars, and uh, just kind of a lake type of theme. So notice in this quilt, every block is the same. It's all flying geese. You're putting three flying geese together, but notice how it switches. So um, in the upper left-hand corner, you have um, your block, the flying geese are pointing down, and then we'll move across the top of the quilt. So the first one's pointing down, and then the next one left, the next one up, and the next one right, and then it repeats that again. The next one is down, and then left, and then up, and then right. That's eight blocks across. The next row, you're taking the, the block that was at the end of row one, and you're repeating that block at the beginning of row two. So now we start with the right block, and then we go down and left and up and right, down and left and up, and then we move that left block, we repeat that again in row three, not the left. Then the last block in the row two is an up one, so we repeat that up one in the first block in row three, and again we go up and then right, and then down and then left and you're just repeating that pattern over and over all flying geese you could do this in any colorway pinks 
purples. You could do red, white, and blue. Maybe red, white, and blue, you know, each of the three flying geese. You could do this in any colorway. Super simple pattern, um, but it is so striking, so beautiful. Just so, sometimes simple is just peaceful <laughs> and is just darling. I really, really enjoy this one. So again, Marsha asked for the Baptist fan. Again, a really nice, it adds the curvature. We've got a lot of um, straight lines. We've got a lot of triangles with all the flying geese and but just that baptist fan adds a nice classic design but adds a little bit of that secondary um, design element by adding in some some curvature to some of those used a white thread on this one because the backing the um, background fabric is a lighter color and then for the backing marcia chose a pieced backing and so she's used some of the same fabrics from the front and just created a pieced backing across the back. And I like the darker prints on the back. It looks really nice with the lighter um, colors on the front. So just beautiful. Quilting doesn't have to be hard. Doesn't have to be hard. One block repeated over and over and over, each turn different ways, and you have a very pleasing quilt. So I hope you'll try that one. All right, let's move on to the next one. Did you recognize this quilt? <laughs> so this is the Pressed Flowers Quilt Along from Fat Quarter Shop. This was the one that just ended here, um, March, April time period. If you get the Sew Sampler box, these are the patterns that are included. One in each of the box, uh, one pattern in each month of the box. Mary did use all of the called for fabrics, which was the Sugarberry line by Moda, done by Bunny Hill Designs. I love this, I love this, I love this. So the fabrics are even prettier in person. And I said that once I started this quilt along last year, decided to go with my own um, browns and pinks. But I had seen the, um, the fabrics in a quilt store and after I had started the quilt along and really enjoyed them. But now that I get to see them even closer and work with them this week, they're, they're just darling. So like this pink right here, there are little tiny red birds in this one. Just very um, small scale prints. Love the grays. The grays with the, and this, it looks red, but it's almost a pinkish red. It's not a, a very, um, you know, it's not like a patriotic red. It's, a, it's more of a pinkish red, got a little more of a pink tint to it. Um, just darling, just darling. Very, um, very small scale prints small pink flowers red background pink ground pink pink background with the red prints and then you've got the grays with the reds and the pinks so here is the flower block that it's set on point as um, you've seen me show with my blocks before and then you're adding a triangle on each of the corners to um, that's how you're making your settings okay so you're adding a bias cut triangle into onto each of the of the corners and then onto that, there is a, an easy corner triangle added onto that. So this block right here, this square is actually where four parts come together. So there's a seam right through the middle, both directions, because that's where that block is coming together, right there. And so you're creating this secondary effect with the diamonds in between each of the... Um, in between each of the flowers and just so so pretty I really I really like this one I really like the colorways um, the background print is this very um, subtle gray polka dot I really really like it just pretty I love the ginghams with them as well um, a really fun now all of the patterns now you can now buy as a bundle and I'll link that down below too and uh, I don't know if this fabric line is still available but if it is I will link it down below as well you may have to piece together parts maybe find parts of the fabrics from um, you know one shop and parts from another or do your own I've been doing the mine in the pinks and the browns 
and I hope to get that done really soon here. So the backing fabric Mary chose. This is a gingham print by Lori Holt. Here is some of the extra. So this is the B Ginghams by, by Lori Holt. And love this because it's already set on point like the gingham that direction. Um, you can see that. And this is a 108 inch wide back, so great for quilt backings. I love it, love it, love it when you don't have to piece your backings. It just makes the process, you know, you finish that quilt top, let's get going. <laughs> and not having to piece a bad, a backing fabric is great. And so many designs now, so many possibilities with the wide backings are just wonderful. Pantograph, all right, so to go along with the feel of this one, this one is called Moulin Rouge. So it has, uh, it has some swirls that come in and then a feather design. The feathers then echoed and it moves on to the next one and another feather on top of that one echoed out. Love the little um, addition of just these little bubbles in here, a little, some small, some large. You have the swirls in there too. The swirls do come to a point and then as they span out, as they spin out, then they get a little wider here, right there at the point. I mean, it's not even an eighth of an inch um, wide, but then as it spins out a little wider and then it does that circle, one little kick out of a, you know, a point there. I love the, the bubbliness feel of this one, the kind of the chunky feel of it. Um, I, I just like it. It's not a floral, but it really adds a lot of texture to the quilt, um, adds a lot of interest with the, the swirls. We're all set on point. We've got a lot of flowers. Everything's set on point, but we've got, you know, even in the fabrics, we've got a lot of um, bubble type shapes, and I, I love this pantograph. Used a white thread. The background print here is all in white. And so white, um, we added texture without adding any color to it. Really like this. So the quilt does have a, a border around the edge too. And um, just that same, it's, this is a, so this one is polka dot. This one is a very light gingham that's still in that very faint gray, but it's very, um, very, very light. But it's the same colorway as this one. And I like that little bit of a border again kind of sets off the blocks kind of gives your eyes some rest i think this one would be very pretty with this color binding fabric on it because then it would then match with the um the grayish taupe color on the back and create a little bit of an interest there around the edge i think that'd be very pretty so mary's quilt is so pretty so so pretty i love it all right let's move on to the next one This is Sharon's quilt, and Sharon says this is her very first quilt. Incredible. She did a very nice job. Again, quilting does not have to be hard, um, and she came away with a great, a great pattern, a great fabrics, a great size quilt. This one measures 80 by 92, so she didn't go small for her first quilt. <laughs> she, she went big. You know, if you're going to jump in, just jump into the deep end, right? All Civil War reproduction fabrics, we've got... Uh, burgundies, we've got browns, we've got whites with blue and blue with white. So all rectangle type, so you can see the the, um, the block here, kind of done in rows. So we have a square here joined with a rectangle here. And then in the row above that, it's a rectangle and or <laughs> a square and a rectangle. So if you did the entire row, we have a rectangle. I know you can't quite see that one. A rectangle, square, rectangle, square. And then we start the next row and it's a square, rectangle, square, rectangle. And then we flip it back the other way and it just continues on. Um, super easy and big pieces and you make a great big block and then she added sashing um so two longer sashings on one side on either side of the block and then two longer sashings across the um the bottoms 
and then a longer sashing that joins the uh, down the middle between the blocks if that makes sense okay um, so a lot of longer pieces love this she's done a great job and then she asked for just a meander over the whole thing a stipple and um, so I do this on, you know, this is a very simple design to do hand, hand guided, but I did do this, programmed it into the computer, um, and it just looks very similar to what you could do hand guided. So the thread is actually a gray thread because we had a gray backing back here, and the gray on the front, it actually gives it um, almost a creamy look. You really can't even tell. It's a light gray. It's not a very dark, not even the medium or the dark. But the gray on the back, then you just have just texture on the back. On the front, it really reads like um, a light cream color, you know, or even on these, maybe a very light bluish. It's a gray. It really blends in. You don't really see it. With the busyness of these fabrics, you really don't see the, um, the stitching as at all until you get in close. Your quilt shines on a, on a finish like this because the quilting is not meant to compete with your quilt top. It is just there as a utilitarian finish just to keep those three layers together and your fabrics and your um, um, pattern are really what shine in a quilt like this. So we are gonna finish the binding on this one before returning it to Sharon. So we'll be getting that done in the next couple days and um, she'll be getting it back. So I know she'll be excited about that. All right, let's move on to a couple other quilts that have already gone home. All right, this was Joyce's quilt, and this has already gone home to her, so um, we're just gonna look at pictures here today. But this pattern is called Process Flow, and this is from the book called Two, um, the book is called Just Two Charm Pack Quilts, and if I can find a link for that, I will include that down below. So Joyce used, um, used two charm packs called Blue Jeans Jacket, and that would be all of the blues in the quilt, all of the um, the railroad type or zipper type effect that you see. And then she's added in some white yardage there to um, on the long sides and then the blues to make those very long strips. So you have to add a little bit of yardage, obviously, because a charm pack is small. Um, and so all of the, the zipper type effect is all charm packs, but then she's added yardage to that with the white long strips and the blue long strips. And then the backing fabric is a lighter blue. It's not a solid light blue, a little bit of a mottled, and I don't um, have specifics on that backing fabric, but if I can find it, I will link it down below. I like that contrast with the darker blues, the more royal blues on the front, and then switching to the lighter blue on the back, it's a nice contrast there. The pantograph for this one, we kind of totally switched things up and I went with espresso on this one. And the reason is, is this is for a wedding gift. And a lot of times I think, um, especially for a wedding gift, it's kind of fun to create something that um, both the bride and the groom are gonna enjoy. So for this quilt, I kind of see uh, the groom looking at it and, um, you know, wow, I like the pattern, you know, because it's a very square, uh, very symmetrical, you know, just uh, very blocky and, and that kind of thing in the, in the pattern. And then for the pantograph or for the design of the quilting, I see the bride looking at it going, ooh, I like the softness of the pantograph. So um, total opposite, we have the very um, geometric shapes in the pattern. Um, now some of the fabrics were floral, you know, and so not that it's totally, um, you know, just solids and everything. There were some um, florals in the fabrics that are lighter print, you know, that give a little um, floral design to the to the pattern. Um, but then with the pantograph, I went with espresso, which is very swirly, kind of tight, thin swirls, um, just a lot of softness added there, a lot of um, dainty, I keep using that word today, I, I don't know why, um, but just a softness to the quilt, just so that we've got a very contrast. We've got the contrast of the of the very straight lines of the quilt with a contrast with the um, the softer pantograph. 
So for the quilting, we did use a white thread. Those white colors on the quilt top are very, it's a very solid white. And um, just felt that this one, the white would look nice. It adds some texture onto the white. It does show up on the blueprints, but those solid blue stripes were, um, you know, kind of negative space there. So by adding the quilting onto there, we added some, with the white thread, it really shows up on those blueprints. And so adds an, another dimension to that as well. So this quilt measures 59 by 71, so a nice throw size but a very nice quilt. And um, I'll be making a second one, I'll be quilting a second one of these for Joyce here soon, and it's in a different colorway, so you'll be wanting to watch the next couple weeks as uh, I finish up that one and show you that one as well. All right, let's move on to Ruth's quilt today. So Ruth is part of my local quilt guild and I am in charge of the challenge committee for our local quilt guild. And this year we are doing a pre-cut and panel challenge. So each month they are given um, a challenge with, to use either a pre-cut or a panel and to create a project using that. And so for the month of May, the challenge is to use a floral or a garden themed panel. So Ruth chose one that has flowers and birds on it. And then she has fussy cut different parts of her panel. So she has the, the elongated center section. And then she has added some other um, fabrics around there, the lattice type work in the, in the blues and the purples. And then she has fussy cut the squares on either side, almost like postage stamps coming down the sides of the quilt there with the different birds and the different flowers, uh, just really, really pretty. And then for a border print around that, she has, again, fussy cut the bird print so that the birds are sitting all the way around. And then she has added another floral border around, um, around the edges of that. Her backing fabric is also a blue, but a little more brighter blue than uh, what was on Joyce's quilt. So Ruth, it's still um, a little bit of a mottled. It's not a solid blue, a little bit of a mottled print. To me, this gave me a kind of hint that um, this was a light, fun, airy quilt. I mean, it was bright, and um, if Ruth had chosen a black background for this one, that would have given me a little different feel for the quilt. When she put a lighter, brighter blue on there, just a very happy and um, springy and just vibrant type of quilt. And so I chose a pantograph called Violetta, and I think this is the first time I have shown this pantograph in something that I have quilted. Ruth asked that I use a floral design and she wanted something that was a little more open, not really tight, not really dense. I like this Violetta and that you can blow it up but it still adds good coverage or I can increase the size of it. So I mean the, the violets on this one were, you know, a good like small dinner plate type size is the size of the of the flowers on this one. And I like the flower in this pantograph in that it, um, Kind of hint, I mean, by the name Violetta, you assume it's a violet type flower, but I think you could even make the argument that this kind of looks like a daisy. Um, you know, maybe, um, you know, I don't know, some something else. You could kind of make the argument that it looks like different sorts of flowers. So um, because the front of Ruth's quilt had several different flowers on it, um, I could have gone with a design that had different flowers in the design itself, but the, the ones I can think of that I have are a little denser and, and Ruth wanted something a little more open. So I like this Violetta pattern. I like the a little bit of elongated kind of stretched leaves that it has or petals that it has. Um, I like that it echoes just a little bit around a couple of the flowers, you know, a couple of the petals, but not all of them. I do like the little round circles that it puts in a couple places as well. I think that's a, a nice way to break up all of the flowers and um, like the way this one nests together. So um, they are, you know, like I said, I did blow them up fairly big, but they nest in well so that you still have a good coverage. You still um, can't see where the break is, you know, so they nest in well. And again, I've talked about that before, where I don't like you to be able to tell where one line starts and the next one. Um, so I like it to be consistent throughout the quilt top and um, 
I really like the way that this one <laughs> stitched out. So we did use a cream color thread. I think a cream color is a nice neutral, more so than white. To me, I feel white is a little too strong on most quilts, unless you have like the last one where I've got some solid whites that it's gonna blend in with that. And even though it shows up stronger on the blue, I like that it blends in with the white. On something like this, where I've got a lot of color, I would prefer to go with a cream color where it's gonna blend in and let those colors of the flowers really shine out and um, without putting another white on top of that that's gonna, um, you're gonna notice the quilting more with that. With the cream color, um, you notice the quilting on the back, especially because it, it creates that, that um, the texture on the back, but on the quilt top itself, the quilting is secondary. All of those colors, all of the picture from the flowers and the birds are really what shines up and it's not till you get closer. And I want it to keep that way and so I'll keep my thread um, more of a neutral so that you don't see the quilting so much until you get in closer. So I really like this one. Uh, Ruth did a really nice job for the challenge and uh, she said she'd be hanging this in her bedroom once it's finished. She gets the binding on it and finishes it. So that'll be a really nice, um, a really nice addition. I think it's really pretty. All right, I have one more quilt to show you today and you're gonna wanna stick around if you are a Lori Holt fan. I love, 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 love this quilt. It is so pretty. So this is the Hometown Quilt by Lori Holt. This was her quilt along last year, I wanna say. This is her applique quilt that she did last year. And um, I did not join in this one, and but I just love these houses. They are, there's so much detail to this. And this is the second um, Hometown Quilt that I have quilted, and I just, I just love it. Um, so everything's appliqued, and um, I've had the question, you know, are you able to stitch over applique? Absolutely. Um, this is Marlene's quilt. She did all machine embroidery, so all of the pieces. She has done a zigzag stitch around the edges. She has matched color to the um, top fabric. So what I mean by that is like on the house right here where you've got a blueprint, she has done a, used blue thread to do a blue zigzag around the edge of that. On the windows, she's used a white thread to do a zigzag stitch around the windows. For the roof, she's used a tannish color thread, you know, so she's matching the thread um, for the applique for the piece that she is going around. And so you match it to your applique piece and not your background piece. And again, she has done a zigzag stitch. She's done a really wonderful job with this one. This is all the called for fabrics. So there is a um, sew along guide that you can download for free. It gives you all the fabric requirements, tells you how to cut all your pieces. And then for the instructions for the quilt itself, um, I will put a link down below to go to Lori Holt's blog. And you will follow along. This is already done, so all of the instructions are there. You can work through at your own pace. And she gives the instructions for each one of the blocks, um, how to piece it together, you know, the process that she's using for each one of the blocks. And so there's not a pattern per se, so you will download the free sew along guide, gives you all the cutting instructions. Then you go to Lori Holt's blog, follow through um, the hometown sew along for each block and it gives you a tutorial for each block as you move through the quilt. You will need um, so simple shapes because these, you know, especially you can see like in the flower right here, these shapes are created by using um, templates. And so you trace the way Lori Holt does her um, applique is you take her so simple shape. So you'll have a shape in the shape of this leaf right here or the shape of this, um, the top of this flower or the back of that flower. You'll have a shape for each one of those. You trace those shapes onto interfacing, and she said it's a um, it's a non-fusible interfacing. It's just a little. Um, it's there to create the the shape. Let me explain. So you'll you'll trace the um, so simple shape, 
onto the interfacing. You then place the interfacing on your fabric right side up, your fabric right side up. Then you stitch directly on that line on your interfacing. Then you'll uh, cut a slit in the interfacing and flip your shape inside so that, or flip your shape around so that now your fabric is showing and the interfacing is on the back side. You leave the interfacing in so this has you know, your, your fabric and the interfacing and then it's um, stitched down on that. So Lori gives all the instructions on her blog, especially her very first one for a sew along is where she dis where she describes um, how to do her um, applique method. Uh, she's just starting a new sew along um, for the how to build a scarecrow one, and so she has just put out her first video for that quilt along. And again, every time she starts a quilt along, she does a video on her YouTube to show you one block and again show you how she does her applique process. So you can find that on her blog for this quilt as well, or if you want to join in her new one, which is the How to Build a Scarecrow one, you can watch that one and stitch along with her um, for that quilt along as it's going. But the detail on these houses is just so cute. And I won't go through each house because I've done that in the past, but just so many details um, that Lori has put into the different blocks. Everything from bushes in front of the house to little stoops where the house is, where you enter the, the door, different windows on different ones. Some of them have, you know, four like this. Um, you know, the transium above the door, if you wanna say that that's what that is. She has chimneys, different chimneys on different ones. This one is a pineapple house, you know, showing hospitality, but others, 4th of July, or you have, um, here's sunflowers, a big tall house, I love that one. So all different colors, all different, um, styles of houses. This is just a really, really fun quilt. Then you'll notice in between the rows of houses, she has pieced blocks. Um, these are probably five inch blocks. They're fairly small, but different ones all the way across and several rows of those using all of her um, called for fabrics in the hometown collection, which are just so pretty. The sashing is this green and pink sashing here, just little tiny X's with the little green flowers. I like all the green prints that are for the, the grass. Several different green prints there that are just so pretty. So then it has a larger border around the outside, this, um, this greenish one here, just so pretty. This, this took a lot of time for Marlene to do, but it is just so pretty once it's done. The backing fabric is a Kimberbell print. This is 108 inch wide, and it's just a polka dot. So I'll link this down below. This is a really fun, you could use this on a lot of uh, really cute quilts. I love the polka dots, I really like that one. So in like a, a light aqua color in, is the backing, and again, it's a wide backing, so no piecing has to be done. This quilt measures 75 by 84, so it is a nice, size quilt, be beautiful on a wall or on a, um, a bed, you know, if you've got a spare room, I think it would be very pretty. So this is where I was saying the Baptist fan again. So, so Marlene does a lot of um, hand quilting and she said she didn't want to attempt this one, the hand quilting, but she liked the open, the larger designs like you would see on a hand quilted piece. You know, you're not going to have very dense quilting a lot of times when you're doing hand quilting. Some do, but she likes a little more open design. So again, I took the same Easy Baptist fan that I've used on, I used on a couple of Marsha's quilts earlier in the video that you saw. But this one, we expanded it much larger. It's the exact same design, but expanded it much larger. And by doing it this large, you will need to make sure, especially if, um, if you're doing this digitized, which I assume you would, um, when you make it larger, it's still got to fit within your throat space, okay? So I, I'm working on Amaras. Both of my machines are Amaras, so I have a 20-inch throat space. And I really could only do one row at a time. And if you notice Baptist Fan, one row stitches, you know, you're getting um, this piece and then this one, and then the next row stitches, and it's coming up underneath those other ones. So, um, you know, this is probably oh my, 12 inches right there or so, but I couldn't do a second one because that second row wouldn't fit within my throat space. So I am moving this at each time. Each time I finish a row, then I'm rotating the quilt to the next section. Don't have to rotate it very much, 
but I did have to rotate it enough that I could get that next pass in there. So just notice that. Don't make your um, pantograph so big that you can't fit it within your throat space or you've defeated the purpose, you know. Um, it's not going to work that way. And a lot of times I like to get a couple passes through on one, um, you know, once you get your quilt set and you're rotated to the next area, usually I hope to get at least a couple passes in there because that's where a majority of your time comes in is actually rotating that quilt, getting everything lined up again. So the more passes you can do in, um, you know, in one throat space area, the better it is. But when we want something larger like this, then I do need to rotate it more often um, for it to fit in that space. All right. So Easy Baptist Fan, the same one you saw earlier, just in a much larger design. And um, again, it doesn't, Baptist Fan is a classic design. I like this one that it doesn't take away from the all the applique. Again, this is one of those that the quilt shines, the pattern shines, the fabric shine. The quilting is just um, in the background. It's not something that's gonna over, um, overtake the quilt because the a lot of this work was done by Marlene and it needs to be seen all the work that she has done and the quilting just needs to be secondary the thread color on this one is a cream color again because I didn't want to compete with a lot of the fabrics um, again because it's more neutral than a white color is now the backing of this if you've seen Lori's videos she always talks about her her base um, uh, fabric is called cloud so not a stark white not a cream color but the cream color on this really blends well with the with the cloud background to it and um, so all of her low volumes are printed on that cloud backing and that way the cream color just blends right in with any of the of the colors uh, of prints um, but doesn't overtake them at all and then on the back it just blends right in creating a lot of texture but uh, not overpowering at all so so pretty I love this quilt so fun all right and that's all I have to share with you today so if you are in need of long arm quilting services I hope you'll get a hold of me my information is down below how you can download the the prep instructions and um, tells you all the information you need, how to prep your quilt, how to get your quilt to me, and I'd be happy to work with you. And I will be back here next week because every quilt is worth finishing. Have a great week.